There you are. I was looking for you. Where have you been? <laughs> More like, where have I been? <laughs> right. Woo. Today is Maggie's fourth birthday. Oh, she's four. I'm so happy about that. And tomorrow, she's barking over there. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. <gasps> Ooh, I hope everybody love each other on Valentine's. All right. You ready for Miss Junie B? Dumb bunny? Dumb bunny. <laughs> this one has, whoa, 10 chapters. Dumb bunnies and clocks. Okay, Dumb bunnies and clocks. That's the first chapter that we are going to read. And here we go. Monday, dear first grade journal. Dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny. I am not allowed to say dumb bunny. <gasps> On account of my teacher heard me call May that name on the playground. <gasps> and he said for me to knock it off. Only here is something I just thought of. Even if I can't say dumb bunny out loud, I can still think it inside my head. That's not nice. I can still think it. Because heads are silent, which is what I like about heads. I am going to try it out right now. <laughs> She's crazy. I put down my pencil and looked at May. Then I squinted my eyes real teensy. And I thought that name to just myself. Dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny. May looked suspicious at me. What are you doing, Junie Jones? <laughs> Why are you squinting like that, she asked. Stop it right now. Stop that squinting. I pause my squinting. I'm not just squinting at you, May. I am also thinking a name about you inside my head. But you don't even know what name I'm thinking because heads are silent. <sighs> Crazy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But oh wait, I lost I lost it. Hang on. Oh, okay. May frown. <laughs> That's not frowning. I started, I started my squint again. <sighs> I'm out of practice. See what happens when you don't read. Dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny, I thought. After I finished, I brushed my hands together, very satisfied. There. That thought, that ought to hold you for a while, I said. May kept on frowning, then blam. Blam. She exploded out of her chair. She zoomed to the front of the room. Mr. Scary, Mr. Scary, Junie B, call me that name again. I know she did, only she thought it inside her head. And that is just plain sneaky. Mr. Scary was writing at his desk. He closed his eyes and did a big breath. May! What are our three new rules about tattling? Oh, he asked. You and I came up with three new rules to control your tattling, remember? Can you tell me what they are, please? May stood up there a real long time. She did not like the three new rules, I believe. Finally, she started to say them. Rule number one, count to 20 before I tattle. She groaned. Mr. Scary nodded. Yes, May, excellent. That's the first rule, go on. Rule number two, said May. If I still feel like tattling, count to 20 again. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Scary did a thumbs up. Yes, good. And rule number three, May sucked in her cheeks. Rule number three, if I still feel like tattling after that, go home, eat dinner, go to bed, wake up, eat breakfast, come back to school, raise my hand to tattle. Then put my hand over my mouth and please be quiet, she said. Oh my gosh. Mr. Scary clapped his happy hands. Perfect, you got it. Those are exactly the rules we talked about, aren't they? He said. 
I'm very proud of you for remembering them. He stood up and walked her back to her chair. You have a great memory for rules, May, he said. <clears throat> but the next step is to actually follow the rules, okay? And I don't believe you counted to 20 this time, did you? I leaned over and tapped on him. I can vouch for that, I said. There was definitely no counting. Mr. Scary frowned at me. I'll deal with you in a minute, Miss Jones, he said. You and I are going to review the rules on name calling. <gasps> uh oh, she's in trouble. I did a gulp. But I didn't even call her a name, Mr. Scary. All I did was think a name in my head. I said, May, flash her angry eyes. No, you did not think it, Johnny Jones. You told me you were thinking it. And that's exactly like saying it almost, she said. She went on, plus you didn't even think it quietly. You thought it so loud that I could hear it in your brain. <laughs> oh my gosh. May looked up at Mr. Scary. My ears were tested last year in kindergarten. She said, the nurse said I can hear as good as a North American barn owl. <laughs> Mr. Scary stared at her a real long time. No, May. No, I'm sorry, he said, finally. But the nurse did not tell you that. You do not hear as well as a North American barn owl. May squirm in a chair a little bit. Squirming is what happens after fibbing. Uh-oh. At least that has always been my experience. After a minute, May put her hair... hair her hair. Her head. <laughs> May put her head on her desk. They're barking. Can you hear them? Mr. Scary bent down next to me. And as for you, Miss Jones, this is the absolute last time I ever want to talk to you about name calling, he said. I don't want to say dumb bunny, or I don't think that you want to say dumb bunny, or sing dumb bunny, or hum dumb bunny, or write dumb bunny. Do you understand? Oof. I tapped my fingers on my desk. But then what am I supposed to do when May is mean to me? I ask him. I have to call her something, or else she won't even know I'm mad. <laughs> I thought for a second, then I clapped my hands together. Hey, I know. Maybe I could just think the dumb part in my head, and I'll call her just plain bunny, I said. Would just plain bunny be okay with you? May popped up from under her sweater. No, 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 she growled. Just plain bunny isn't nice either. My friend named Sheldon stood up. Bunny isn't nice? How come Bunny isn't nice, he asked. I have an aunt named Bunny, <laughs> and she's very, very nice. Sheldon looked at Mr. Scary. My aunt Bunny is married to my Uncle Vern, he said. And Bunny has a lot of... Mr. Scary quick held up his hand. Yes, Sheldon, we know. You told us many interesting things about your aunt Bunny. But right now, we don't need to hear any more about your Aunt Bunny's school tattoos, said Sheldon. <laughs> Please sit down, said Mr. Scary. Across the room, Lucille sprung right up. Well, I love, love, love bunnies, she said. So this subject is perfect timing for me because I'm having a big party at my giant house on Saturday. All of you are invited to come. She bounced up and down real excited. And guess what else? A very famous bunny is going to be there to meet you. Guess who it is, everyone? Guess the bunny? Guess the bunny, she said. Ra Room 1 thought real hard. Then all of us started to guess at once. Bugs Bunny, Buster Bunny, the Bionic Bunny, Thumper. <laughs> Lucille rolled her eyes. No, 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 she said. My bunny is way more famous than those dumb cartoon guys. We get some more. The Tricks Rabbit, the Velveteen Rabbit, Peter Rabbit, we asked. 
Lucille stamped her foot. No, she said again. <laughs> What's wrong with you people? It's the Easter Bunny. Haven't you heard of the Easter Bunny? She reached into her desk and pulled out some fancy envelopes. Then she waved them around real angry. Do you see these invitations, huh? Do you? She asked. These are invitations to an Easter egg hunt at my rich, expensive house. I was going to pass them out at lunch, but if you dumb clucks never even heard of Easter Bunny, just never mind the whole thing. After that, she did a huffy, and she flounced back in her chair. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at her face. Ooh, she is mad. Mr. Scary hurried over there. Then Quick got her up, and he took her by the hand. He walked her into the hall. They were gone a real long time. When they finally came back, Lucille said she's sorry for calling us dumb clucks. What is a clucks? I don't know. It spells C L U C K S. Look, look, clucks. Whatever that is. No nice. That is some kind of insult, apparently. <laughs> Then she took the envelopes out of her desk again, and she gave everyone an invitation. So, yippee! Hooray! Room one is going to a party! Now, chapter two. Clothes and knobs. Okay, you probably know what that means. <laughs> Lucille was still mad at lunch. I just don't get it, she growls. How could anyone forget the Easter Bunny? The Easter Bunny brings candy right to your door. Lenny did a frown at her. He doesn't bring candy to my door, Lucille, he said. The Easter Bunny is a different religion than me. I'm Jewish. Surely not it. I'm Jewish too, Lucille, she said. I've never even been to an Easter egg hunt before. What do you wear to something like that, anyway? Lucille stood up and fluffed herself. Well, since the Easter Bunny and I are the same religion, <laughs> I'm going to wear a fancy Easter dress. Surely, she said. Surely thought for a minute. Then she nodded. Hmm. Then I guess I will wear a fancy Jewish dress, she said. Lenny's eye lit up. Really, Shirley? You mean we have to, um, we have our own clothing line? <laughs> what? You mean we have our own clothing line? Okay, I did not get that. He smiled. Then I think I'll wear some fancy Jewish pants, he said. My friend named Herbert tapped on his chin. Let's see. Since I'm pres Presbyterian. <laughs> oh, my God. I guess I should wear pressed by Tyrion pants, he said. He turned and looked at me. Pressed by Tyrion means we iron out our wrinkles, I said. He's, he said. Oh, Lord. Just then Sheldon sl slapped the table with his hand. Hey, I know. I'll wear a fancy turban. A turban? <laughs> a fancy turban is religious clothes, right? He asked, I love fancy turbans. Mr. Scary was listening to us while he ate. He quick put down his sandwich. Boys and girls, you're getting way off track here, he said. Lucille's Easter egg hunt is not a religious party. Really? I've spoken to her mother about it. It's more of a spring picnic with an egg hunt activity. Am I right, Lucille? Yes, she said. My mother said the Easter Bunny isn't even working that day. <laughs> He's just going to hop around the party and smile and have his picture taken with people. All right. I thought about that for a second. I don't think bunnies should smile, I said. Bunnies have yellow teeth like clown teeth, except bunny teeth are way pointier. Sheldon nodded. My Aunt Bunny has no point. <laughs> has a pointy tooth. He said she can stab a pickle with it. Oh my gosh. And the pickle just stays there. All of us stared at him. 
Sheldon has the interestingest family I've ever heard of. Lucille did a big breath. Well, I don't care about pointy bunny teeth, she said. Bunnies have cute floppy ears and puffy fluffy tails and itchy twitchy little noses. I kept on picturing their teeth. Bunny teeth can nibble your head into a nub. Oh, whoa, whoa, we're moving. Don't get dizzy now. <laughs> no, they cannot, Juni B. Jones, she said back. Oh, yes, they can, Lucille. Whatever your last name is, I said, I saw it on Oprah. <laughs> oh, she's watching Oprah now. <laughs> Mr. Scary glare at me. I dug down in my seat. And I quieted my voice. Oprah has a lot of knob information. I said very soft. Mr. Scary glare again. I started to squirm. Teachers can spot a fib a mile away. At recess, Lucille told us more about the party. She said that there was going to be lots of delicious food to eat. Plus, also, there was going to be an exciting prize for the Easter egg winner. Ooh, prizes. Where do you hear this, she said. My daddy is going to hide a real pretend golden egg. <laughs> a real pretend. <laughs> oh, gosh. Whoever finds the golden egg will win the grand prize of the day. And that is fabulous play day with me, Lucille. She twirled around and hugged herself. <laughs> it's not just any old fabulous play day with me either, she said. The winner is going to get to go swimming with me in my heated indoor swimming pool that we just had enclosed. She did a little a little shiver and rub her arms. Isn't that exciting, everyone? She asked. Doesn't that give you tinkles? I thought tinkles when you gotta go pee. You got a tinkle? No? <laughs> I guess wrong. She looked around. Well, doesn't it, huh? Doesn't it make you tinkle all over, she asked. All of the children looked curious at her. Um, Herbert rocked back and forth on his feet for a minute. Mm, I think you mean the tingles, he said at last. Jose, no, the si, Lucille. You definitely mean the tingles. <laughs> Lucille squinted at those two. Tingles, tinkles, whatever. The point is a play date with me gives you goosebumps on your arms, she said. Just look at your arms, people. Don't you see them? Don't you see the goosebumps? All of us looked at our arms. None of us saw goosebumps. We waited and waited real patient. Then finally, goosebumps, shouted Sheldon. I see goosebumps, Lucille. He ran to her and pointed. Look, Lucille, see them? See my goosebumps? He asked. Lucille's face beamed very happy. Oh, Sheldon, those are goosebumpiest goosebumps I ever saw. Thank you, Chelsea. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for those goosebumps, she said. After that, she gave him a big hug, and she waved her fingers at us. Well, ta-da, everyone, she said. It's time for me to go look at myself in the cafeteria window. <laughs> then she shook her shiny hair and she skipped away. Sheldon kept on standing there. She was shocked from the hug, I think. Then all of a sudden, his whole face light lit up. <clears throat> he began to shout, Lucille, wait up! I look at myself in the cafeteria window, too, he shouted. He took off skipping after her. I smiled to see that. I think Sheldon has a crush on Lucille, I said to my friend Herbert. Herb looked funny at me. You mean crush? Junie B, he has a crush on Lucille, he said. <laughs> she said a crunch. I started to laugh. Don't be ridiculous, Herbert. It's definitely crunch, I said. I'm excellent at eggs, eggs, Russians, eggs, like eggs. <laughs> this is so hard. Herb looked funny at me. 
again. <clears throat> I do not know why. After a minute, Sheldon and Lucille skip past us. Look at that. Ooh, she's running. Run! <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> they were smiling and giggling and chasing each other. Sheldon was calling to her. Come back here, you springy little lamb, he called. <laughs> I slapped my knee. Springy little lamb. <laughs> he called her a springy little lamb. That's a hoot, I said. May heard me talking. It's not funny, Johnny Jones. Can you see what he's doing? She said, Sheldon is trying to get in good with Lucille, so she'll tell him. Where the golden egg is hidden. Oh, sneaky. He's just trying to win the play date to swim in her pool. She followed him with her eyes. He's not going to get away with it, though, she said. After that, she cupped her hands around her mouth and she shouted after him. You can't just forget about it, Sheldon Potts. I'm going to be the one who finds the golden egg, not you. I've got eyes like a red-tailed hawk. I looked at her very curious. May has a lot of birth parts, I believe. <laughs> also, she's a cuckoo. <laughs> and there's no name calling. That's just the truth. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to pause here because it's, uh, it's just going to be a long book. <sighs> so, in the meantime, what do I say? Be nice to mommy and daddy. Do your homework. Clean your room. Be nice. Be good. Have a good Valentine's Day tomorrow. And also got to say that Easter is not about the bunny or the chocolates or the all the stuff that you get. As a Christian, Easter is about jesus so that's just my belief this is just a book and it's just a story and it's funny and to me it's so hard to read <laughs> but i enjoy it so just remember it's not about the easter bunny if you don't get chocolates or a basket or anything like that don't be sad because that's not what easter is about okay so until the next chapter, which is going to be chapter 3. I know we didn't do a lot, but this book has 10 chapters. Oh my gosh. So, be good. Stay dry. It's going to rain over here. If you're in Florida, it's going to rain. It's cloudy. I saw you. You ran out of the room. Come back here. Let me see your ears. Let me see. Did you clean? Did you clean? Behind your ear? Did you? Did, oh. Ooh. Go back. You got to take a bath. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Go take a bath. Go, 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 go. Shoo. Shoo. <laughs> Don't listen. <laughs> or listen. <laughs>